All right, this is Kenny Wright with Welsh Hormone Optimization, bringing you another training video. Today, we're doing back. So we're starting out, stretching up, lightweight. These are some close grip lat pull downs. These are a good variation of the lat pull down, uh, just to differentiate or to switch it up from the normal wide arm lat pull down, which normally works more, um, you know, outer lat width. These work a little more inner detail for the inner upper back. Um, so when you're doing these, you want to get a full stretch for sure. I pull them down and I kind of roll my wrist out. When you roll your wrist out, it helps you flare your lats out a little bit more. It kind of forces them to flare out. And then you drive your elbows back and squeeze your whole back like, uh, I don't know, if your back were a circle of muscles, you'd be squeezing them all together. So we're all, these are all our first sets, just running through lighter sets, full stretch, big squeeze, stretch, squeeze, and you're pinching your shoulder blades together in these. You're just trying to squeeze your whole back. Jumping into another set, a little heavier, bumping up the weight a little bit. Arms looking good. <laughs> Big stretch. Squeeze. Drive the elbows back. Squeeze the whole back. See that? Squeeze. Squeeze. Stretch. Increasing the tempo a little bit as the weight goes up. Not getting sloppy, but just moving a little quicker. See my BFF over there talking to us, doing the same <laughs> pull downs. All right, so this is Liz from WMSHL, and this is her first official back day. So she is brand new to working out, so it's good to see somebody just starting out. And um, she's not really making any mistakes because I'm there to guide her, but it's good to see, you know, somebody first starting out. It's encouraging to see that they can, you know, run through full-blown exercises with everybody. A lot of people are intimidated to start going to the gym in the very first place. I think that everybody's looking at them. They're in everybody's way. And honestly, everybody feels that way. Everybody's at the gym because they want to get better. So no matter, you know, how big you are, how good you are, how, how fit you are, how long you've been doing it, everybody is their own worst critic. So never, never worry about what anybody else is thinking about you. And if somebody is being an asshole, then fuck them. That's their problem. So just go there, so be respectful, and take care of yourself. This is one of my last sets, so this is pretty heavy. Up over, what, 230 or something like that. This is a little quicker, like I said. Big squeeze, stretch, squeeze. So I, I come up, all the way straight up, lean back, squeeze towards my chest. Same with her. So you're stretching up, coming down. Boom. See, I'm pointing to her where to flex and kind of bracing her back so that she can flex against where she feels. And sometimes it's good to have somebody there spotting you, pushing against where you should be flexing so that you can get a better mind-muscle connection of, you know, where to move your muscles, where to mentally connect to. Here's Liz going through another set. And she actually is really uh, not awkward, <laughs> I think is the right term. A lot of people start working out. And that's, if you're by yourself, you might be super awkward. But um, she goes through the motions pretty well. And everything is, is perfectly fine. And she actually you know, was able to uh, do the progressive overload pretty well. She was able to increase um, weight every set. And right there, I mean, that's 85 pounds. That's good weight. All right. We're moving on behind the neck lat pull downs wide arm so these are also for inner detail um not so much for lat width i mean it does absolutely obviously with a wide grip works your lats uh the, the the width of your lats but it's also um good for inner detail upper mid traps in that whole area there so i use this for detail because 
uh, in competition, I feel. I mean, it's been a while, obviously, and I have improved since then. But it was a, it was an area that I wished on stage would have been more highlighted, would have been more detailed, would have been more 3D. And these definitely help that in like that back double bicep shot, which is, you know, pretty similar to the motion that you're doing there. So uh, somebody a while ago, and I say this in another video too, taught me um, to, if you want to improve an area, find an exercise that helps you move like you would flex that area. And that was pretty much the only good information that person ever gave me because they were pretty much a dumbass other than, <laughs> than that. But uh, it, it, was, it made me think about exercises and what I'm doing and how can I work this way? How do you flex it? What exercise mimics that? So this mimics a back double bicep for sure and brings out that same detail. So Liz getting through her set. And the form's good too. See, she comes up straight overhead, leans forward behind the neck. Try not to rip your hair out with the bar. You're good. So, all the way up, down. And I'm having a hard time staying down because in this video I'm pretty lean. I don't know when this will be released, so I might not be in such good condition by that point because I kind of switched gears a few days ago. But, um, so my body weight here is probably around 220 pounds, something like that. Um, and with nothing to hold your knees down because you're facing the other direction, it gets pretty hard at when the, when the weight gets near your own body weight, it starts to kind of lift you up. Okay, moving on here to uh, a true old school, uh, I guess this would be kind of like a T-bar row considered. I do the actual T-bar machine. They're doing this type of row here with a handle attached to it. It's cool because it, you used to have to do it in the corner of buildings and you would tear up the fucking drywall and all that. But this, that machine, or not machine, but that little piece of equipment there helps pivot it and obviously not slide backwards so that's pretty cool so these exercises are pretty similar obviously the hand position kind of changes the target of where uh, the tension is going but all in all they're pretty similar and I chose to do these instead so that's what's happened this is a true t-bar row these are good for back thickness. You can do heavy weight with this, and since your chest is, is being supported, you can do more weight without putting a lot of strain on your lower back by holding all that weight up. You know, you're braced by that pad that your chest is against. So there goes Liz, and that's good weight too. 35 pound plate there. Just kind of trying to get the hang of it. Yeah, <laughs> I was gonna say, she should step back a little bit. That's funny, I probably told her that too. So there you kind of just let your arms hang, shoulders kind of sag forward just to get a full stretch and then boom, up, back, squeeze. This works middle back thickness, so if you're lacking development there, this is definitely a good way to uh, build that up. Back is, back is a very hard muscle to work because it's kind of abstract. It's behind you, you can't see it. Uh, you're using other limbs to try to get it to flex, and you can mess up. You can pull with your forearms. You can pull with your biceps. You can use your triceps. You can kind of shrug it with your traps. There's a lot of muscles or secondary muscles involved that you can really take over with and not even work your back. So it's really about creating a mind-muscle connection um, and just learning how to squeeze your back, how to connect to it. A good way for it, like I said, is for somebody to be behind you, telling you if they know what they're doing, telling you where you should be flexing, kind of pushing on that muscle so that you can flex against their touch. It just kind of creates a sensory understanding of what's going on. Or you work back and you get freaking crazy sore, and then when you, those days that you're recovering and you're super sore, you can kind of just move and wiggle and push against the soreness and say, Oh, that's how you, you know, that, that, okay, that hurts here. That's how you work that. That's how you move that. It gives an idea of that mind-muscle connection as well. Liz actually dropped the weight down a little bit, which is good. That, that, that's a good lesson there to learn too, because especially back is not all about weight. You see people just hucking fucking huge weight, 
with Beck because they, they saw Ronnie Coleman do it. They saw Dorian Yates do it. But Ronnie Coleman and Dorian Yates were, you know, 100 pounds heavier than you and three times as strong as you. And they were lifting that fucking crazy heavy weight, but they were doing it properly. So, you know, you don't, you don't, you need to get the form down. You need to get the mind muscle connection down long before you start stacking up big old weight. All right. We are moving on to hammer strength high row. So these work the, the width of the lat as you stretch out. But as you come back, squeeze, I rotate just a hair. As my elbow gets parallel, I'm getting a little weak there. But as my elbow gets parallel to my body, I give it a little twist, which I kind of do in another video, but I do it with a cable. Um, but it's the same type of variation. That was a lower row. But anyways, so I get my elbow parallel and then give it a kind of twist. And then that works your inner lap, you know, more towards like uh, the thickness where your spine meets your lat, if that makes sense. I could come up with some more scientific terms, but screw it. So Liz going again. See, she's kind of emphasizing because I told her as your elbow goes, you know, parallel with your body to kind of twist. So I was slacking a little bit on it <laughs> because I was worn out doing heavier weight, all that. She's doing it perfectly. So you stretch, pull, pivot, stretch. This is what lit love. <laughs> lat width and then inner back as you're as you're squeezing it so you can do these different variations you can do them single arm you can do them you know with both arms this one i'm kind of just entertaining myself by alternating and i switch it up go back to some uh, double arm rows some point i believe there you go just creates different feel it's nice, you know, uh, to break up the repetition, the monotony of exercising. That's the correct word, possibly. That's some good weight there. It is going again. See, and she was embarrassed, too, <laughs> saying that she moves so slow that it'll be too boring for anybody to watch. But as a beginner, in all honesty, it's far better to go through reps incredibly slow. Even as a, even as a, you know, somebody who knows exactly what they're doing, as a seasoned, uh, you know, gym goer, you could stand to slow your reps down. They should, they should be that pace. You know, the, the positive should take maybe two seconds. It is a little more explosive than the negative motion. The negative motion should take about four seconds. But uh, her pace was, was actually good. You don't want to be moving too fast and not even hitting the muscle that you're trying to hit because you're just using momentum to do everything for you. So we're finishing off. We hit lat width. We hit, you know, inner back. We hit inner upper traps. So now we're moving to... Lower back, these are like your, your spinal extensors that tie your lower back into your glutes. This machine, obviously you want to raise that uh, pad up to where it ends right about the crease of your hip so that you can fold over it. Hold yourself with your hamstrings a little bit, but you don't want to make this a hamstring dominant workout. You want it to be lower back. Squeeze as you're coming up. Stretch. Squeeze the lower back. Just come parallel. You don't need to. It's funny. These are actually called hyperextensions, but uh, hyperextend would be going past parallel. But with these, you want to just go to about parallel and just hold the flex. Just squeeze it, and it'll create a nice looking uh, lower back into your glutes. If you have like a, a an amazing upper back development, and, you, and then it just kind of turns to nothing, and you just got smooth nothingness for six inches before your butt, it's just incomplete. So this is a nice way to end a back workout and complete it. So you can also add a little bit of weight in. I kind of stretch them out, row back a little bit, and it doesn't take a whole lot of weight to make it much, much harder. There's a lot of leverage working against you with that, you know, your whole upper, the length of your whole upper body creates uh, a lot of resistance. So a 35 pound plate, it gets pretty heavy and it creates a huge lower back pump. And if you've ever had a, a lower back pump, it's a strange feeling and <laughs> you don't want to push it too far because then you feel like you're crippled. So there she's going with the 25 and remember this all is her first time doing anything. 
ever. Like she's never particularly worked out ever. And she kind of made a resolution to start um, and to get into great shape. And that's freaking awesome. So we will definitely keep up on her progression and show her improvements. She's already taken beginning pictures, you know, to compare it to progress pictures. So that's going to be really cool. All right, so that's another back day. Kenny Wright, Welsh Hormone Optimization. Um, click the like button, subscribe, all that good stuff. All right, thanks.